Christopher. Oh, let me tell you this. There's a, 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 a movement happening in uh, this country right now, and it's called the alt-right. And I don't know a lot about them. I'm learning. I'm asking questions, and I'm learning uh, about more about them. And I'm not sure if they were around prior to President Trump, but they did become prevalent. Uh, they have become prevalent since the president been there. I have with me one of the uh, guys who was a part of this movement, Christopher Catwell. He's a writer and a talk radio personali personality. And I wanted to talk to Chris about this movement and other things. Um, Christopher, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. It's excellent to be with you. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. I'm uh, Skyping with Christopher. Um, let me learn a little bit more about you. I read that you are an atheist. Is that right? I, uh, I, would, I would very much like to claim that I believe in a God. I just don't. I appreciate religious influence and that sort of thing. I, just can, I, can, I cannot in good faith tell somebody that I believe in a deity. And why not? Because uh, because I the information that I have available to me seems to suggest that um, the stories I've heard about the paranormal are untrue. Did you grow up believing in God? No, I uh, uh, my my parents, my mother tried very hard to raise me as a, a Catholic boy, um, but I I asked questions of her that she was unable to answer, and I did not uh, I did not take to those answers. And was your father in the home? Uh, he was, yeah, yeah. And did you talk to him about God? Um, uh, dad, dad was not much into the God thing himself. Oh, I see. Um, mm. I noticed that I've interviewed several uh, of the guys from the alt right movement, and they don't believe in God. They they are atheists. Do you know why that is? And is and is that a good idea? I would say that that is. Um I think that that's just a matter of chance that the alt writers that you've spoken to don't uh, don't have any religion. I, I know Christian alt writers. I know yeah, I know some too. Even alt writers. So I I don't know that that's I, I don't know that religion is really central to the alt right movement. And I, and I and I think that's partially because um, it, it is it is not necessarily about getting back to a simpler time, so to speak. I, I don't think alt the alt writers will often eschew the term conservative. Um, we're, we're sort of, I think that we're sort of looking for something new, but right wing. Does that make sense? Yes. Where do you get your values from, if not from God? Um, I, I would say that, uh, tradition can certainly serve as one of those places to, to derive one's values from. As I said, we're sort of looking, uh, in my, in my opinion, I think that we're sort of looking for something new, but trying to come to better outcomes, right? So, so we would take from... Uh, uh, tradition, certain religious practices, perhaps, but not necessarily trying to go back to an older, simpler time, right? So you get your values from traditions? We, we get our values from, I get my values anyway, um, from, from information, from the information made available to me through experience and, and learning. Amazing. I did interview Vox Day, and he, uh, I want to make that known, he said that he's a Christian, so I have interviewed yeah. one. Um, I, I imagine you would run into a lot of Christians if you spoke to a lot of alt-writers. It, it right. would be on and off, you know. How do you know right from wrong, if not from God? Well, I, I imagine that, um, I, 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 sadly, uh, without that central point of authority, it's it's difficult to know objectively what is right and wrong. Uh, uh, personally, uh, my my views uh, largely stem from my uh, experience in libertarianism. I, I think it's wrong generally to initiate force against people, and that uh, as long as one is acting voluntarily, uh, that that one is generally in a good safe area as far as morality goes but that's that's my personal opinion and i can't say that that extends to the entirety of the alt-right yeah i read that you were a libertarian at one time as you just mentioned and now you're an alt-right why did you leave why did you stop being a libertarian and became an alt-right i'm not entirely sure that i have stopped being a libertarian i i read hans Hermann hoppe's democracy the god that failed is an excellent book i can't recommend that highly enough um, and he and he talks about libertarianism is basically the, the almost as if the ultimate logical conclusion of it is monarchy because property owners are in complete control 
of their property and, and are going to be able to t tell the people on their property what to do. And as we know from anything that goes on in, in modernity, we know that some people are a lot better at obtaining property than others. And without a centralized state to create all this uncertainty in titles and property taxes and whatnot, then you can imagine that uh, very capable people are going to end up in control of more land than others. And, and most likely, most of us would be tenants upon that land, and we would uh, basically be their subjects. And so... Um, Libertarians I'm, I'm, tend to take it too far, though. They tend to uh, want no government involved, no nothing, just wild people. You are an anarchist, right? Well, I, I, I used to describe myself that way, but I, I don't anymore because I don't I don't think that there's no there's there's no lack of control in a privatized society. Right. So, so you're talking about if, if we if, if there's no state, if there's no centralized government, no democratically elected, whatever, it, then what happens is whoever owns the land, if the one is not subject to their uh, one, one is not subject to taxes in their ownership of land, they're more than more or less welcome to begin collecting taxes, right? So if I if I own some property in the absence of the state and I'm not paying taxes, then I am the government of that property, right? Right. So 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 the idea would be that whoever owns the land is is the is the king essentially, and whoever wanted to live on that person's land would would be answering to them. You would end up, in my opinion, probably with a great deal more control than you do under democratic governments. And I like that idea and I want it to come to fruition. Let me ask, you were an anarchist at one time, and you say you're not now. First of all, what is that exactly? Well, there's a lot of different uh, uh, types of lunatics who will call themselves anarchists. I, I used to talk, I used to refer to myself as an anarcho-capitalist, and if, if pressed, I still will, because foundationally, I, I am still of the opinion that I don't, I don't like, demo I'm anti-democratic. De define that for me, define that word, I don't know exactly what it uh, means. No, no, well, anarchist uh, overall would, would be no, um, no, no, no centralized state, right, so, or... Um, in my in my book, the non-aggression principle, non-initiation of force. The only way that you can, uh, the only way that you would be able to do a thing like collect taxes if somebody lived on land that you owned outright. You know, whereas we live in a society where there's a centralized government that's elected and they basically tax things however, whenever, wherever they want according to the whims of 535 people. Right. So anarchists mean no central government. It, 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 there are some anarchists out there, the guys who like to smash up a Starbucks. These no, people no, I'm talking about the word uh, anarchist. Does it mean no central government? I, I think it means no no state, no government, yeah. And at one time you believed that way. What changed your mind about it? The, the thing is that I still foundationally believe that the, the way that we institute governments today, I think, is foundationally unjust. I, I think that people should be able to rule over their property with an iron fist. So let me ask again, just for the record, you are not an anarchist or you are an anarchist? Well, I, I'm, maybe I'm doing a poor job of explaining this. I, no, I, I just I, need to know if you still, I understand well, the explanation, but are you still an anarchist, yes or no? Yes. Oh, okay. And um, why did you become an alt-right? What made you go that route? It was it was the realization that the sort of society that I envision is is not absent control, right? So if you have if you have a monarch, if you have a property owner who is the ruler of that land, and and you can imagine that there would be some people are better at ruling than others, and so you you, you would have large almost like uh, uh, almost like feudalism, right? And so when I was running around with the libertarians, and I hadn't understood that. Uh, what I was what I was largely thinking about was this world where everybody just got to drive on the highways without a driver's license and stuff like this, and that seemed like fun. But as I got a little older, I matured, I read a little bit more. I'm like, oh, this makes a great deal more sense. And as and as things got crazier and crazier with the left, you know, resorting to violence all over the country, I said, yeah, okay, now I understand the need for authority. Because that's why I didn't understand why you would want to be an uh, an anarchist because. Um, most people today, or yeah, most people today don't believe in the laws of their heart. And if they didn't have some form of government or laws to control them outwardly, they'll just go insane. They become very destructive. And because they are not self-governed, so they need the law of the land to govern them. 
And so uh, that's why I didn't understand why you would want to go down that road to become an anarchist. Right. The, 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 I guess it would make more sense if I said I was a monarchist, probably, because because really what I'm looking for is not is not the abolition of all authority here. It's 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 a more efficient manner of choosing rulers. Um, amazing. And so what's your plan as an alt right? What do you plan to do? Why well, become an alt? What do you what do you want to do? What do you want? Well, the first thing I think I want is I want to normalize racism. I want be people to be able to talk about race, frankly, honestly, and publicly without having their lives, careers, and relationships ruined. And how will you do that by becoming an alt-right? Because the impression out there is that alt-right are, are, are angry, destructive people as the alt-left or the are. And it's the same thing with different names. I'll let you respond to that when I come back. Let me take a quick break. Okay, I'm talking with, I uh, Skyping with uh, Christopher Catwell, a writer and talk radio personality. He's an alt writer and very interesting. Christopher, are you, um, are you the leader, one of the leaders of this movement? Uh, I imagine that there's a few people out there who would say so. I've I've got a, a call-in radio show called the Radical Agenda, well, uh, internet radio show. I'm not FCC friendly, but um, uh, I have a call-in show. I've got almost 10,000 regular listeners and uh, many more casual listeners. So uh, there are people who see me that way. I wouldn't say I'm above a guy like Richard Spencer, but you know I'm I'm in there. Um, and so I asked before the break the alt right seem to be angry just as the left is angry and uh and and the left are atheists as well how will you uh solve the problem being in you know if this is true how would you solve the problem being angry because you can't so resolve anger with anger well, I, I, I don't, I'm not entirely certain about that, actually. I think that if one's angry enough, they can go and crush the obstacles in their path, and they might have just been mad at those obstacles, right? So anger, I think, is a powerful motivator. And, and so are you angry? Uh, extremely, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty angry that the ADL put out a, a murder hit list of alt-writers and alt-lighters, even. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty angry that the SPLC is going out of their way to defame people. I'm mad that people get fired from their jobs for telling the truth. I'm mad that people get assaulted in the streets for voting for the president of the United States. Those things are pretty, I think those things are pretty, pretty much worth being angry about, yeah. Um, what about the Antifa? I'm I'm pretty angry at the Antifa too. If we could go start chucking them out of helicopters, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> they're pretty mean. I think I think that they yeah, well they're mean, all right. They're mean in the sense that if they, you know, five of them can catch a little girl in an alleyway, they're mean. You but know? They, they are they are evil though. They're beyond they are beyond mean. They right. are evil. What's the difference? But that's what we need anger for, to go smash those guys open, right? No. <laughs> no. The best way to defeat evil is with good, and and in that way you're stronger. You're able to overcome it and not be destroyed within by it. Well, I don't. I I, I think that uh, I think that going out and destroying evil, like like physically removing Democrats and communists, I, I think that that's a I think that's good a force for good in the world. That's my <laughs> opinion. Of it. You say you want to uh, talk about race openly. Yeah, and give me an example of what you mean. I'll give you an example. The reason that I'm only on the Internet is because I got fired from broadcast for talking about race and IQ. And what were you saying about it? I was saying that on average, blacks in America have a standard deviation lower IQ than whites and that that likely has a genetic origin, given the fact that these two distinct groups of people evolved in different climactic conditions for thousands of years. And you give me an example of or proof that blacks have a lower IQ than whites. I'm I'm afraid I can't simply produce that in the middle of a radio interview. I could I could direct you to read. Uh, I believe Jared Taylor wrote a, a very good book on it uh, titled uh, "Race and IQ," um, and and the evidence suggests, and I don't think it's seriously disputed, that on average, it's not a reliable way of judging individuals, but on average, blacks have a low uh, a standard deviation lower IQ than do whites, and that this uh, the reason that I thought it was important at the time is because it was the height of the the Black Lives Matter riots, and I said, well, maybe this is the reason that these folks are filling up our prisons. Maybe it's not just cops running out hunting black folks for sport. Maybe it has something to do with their behavior, given the fact that they're not as smart as us. 
And so your, high, your IQ level is higher than the average black? My, my IQ level is higher than the average white. Uh, but, but yeah, <laughs> I, so on average, the, the, the average white person and the average black person are going to have about a standard deviation uh, in between them, 15 points. So 85 to 100, you know. And so um, is it possible that Black Lives Matter and uh, the blacks who are committing crimes and hating their fellow man, could it be, could it be due to the lack of moral character and not IQ? Or lack of IQ. Well, I would certainly say that uh, 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 some a little bit of moral character would go a long way in people who can't figure out that it's a bad idea to rob people. If if they if they had uh, if they could go find themselves some Jesus, then that might be good for them. But uh, I I would say that people who have not a whole lot of money and 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 don't figure things out as fast are going to generally be more prone to crime than are people who are a little bit more intelligent, right? And so if the alt right is angry at the injustice that's been put up on white people over the years, then you're going to end up in the same manner that Black Lives Matter and other angry blacks have ended. Uh, I, I certainly hope not. I don't think that we're in the habit of like burning down pharmacies and blowing our buddies' brains out. The, the alt right is... Yeah, it will come to that. I'm, I'm not certain of that. I, the, the, the people that I hang around in alt-right circles are very civilized people. We do, we do not want to be uh, getting uh, – we have to prepare for violence when we go to rallies because people will assault us. But you have not heard about any alt-right riot. You don't hear about us going out and jumping innocent people. It's not what we do, right? We are here to try to restore order. But what, And I understand what you're saying now, but uh, in a couple of generations – if you continue down this path with anger, it will. The blacks who are angry didn't start out being violent right away and burning down buildings and carrying on. It grew to that each generation got worse because no one corrected the anger. Anger, and so if you fight this issue with anger, in a few couple of generations they will be burning down buildings and killing their fellow man and carrying on. Well, I, I would certainly say that if we uh, need to use violence to get our political ways, which is my study of history leads me to believe that that's often how politics are handled, then, yeah, I mean, people might get hurt. But the goal here, the idea, the, the culture of what we're doing here is is not a violent thing, right? Uh, which which I don't think that you can say for, for a lot of the culture in the black community. Listening to gangster rap and stuff like that is a little bit different than saying, hey, we deserve a homeland, right? Uh, we have an objective in mind. The idea is to have a place for, for white people to, to live according to their own ways and that we can accomplish that goal. And if we don't accomplish that goal, then, yeah, I imagine that over time, probably people would end up getting hurt. But I think that we can I think that we can accomplish that goal. I think that we can do it peacefully, more importantly. And so that's uh, that's worth putting a lot of effort into in my book. Whose fault is it that white people are in the condition that they are in today in that? The people of color, whether it's blacks, Hispanics, Japanese, Chinese, and all are uh, uh, blaming white folks for everything. Who fault is that? Well, it's 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 white men's fault. I mean, we we are ultimately the only demographic that appears to be capable of any responsibility in this world, and and we are the de facto rulers of the world. So, uh, everything that goes on in this world is something that we allow to occur. Now, I would say. That there's some people who very much look like white males who have a lot of control over our society, and uh, they 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 aren't. Uh, some, some people refer to them as Jews, and those people have a lot of uh, responsibility on their shoulders as well. So white people, it's somebody else's fault that white men and white some white women decided that they're going to be afraid to speak up, that they were not going to stand up for what is right. It's someone else's fault. So you sound just like the angry blacks. They are constantly blaming the whites. The blacks blame the Jews. They blame the Chinese. They blame the Asian. They blame the Mexicans. So you, by blaming someone else for your weakness, it's not going to get you anywhere. So I, I can understand why why you took that, but if you, if you listen to the entirety of what I said, the first thing I said is white men are responsible, right? Well, that's, that's the but, first thing that came out of my mouth, and then I went on to Jews. But right? why did they? What did they do? What? The only reason Jews have power in white society is because white men give the, that power to them, right? The only reason women can vote is because we allow them to vote. The only reason blacks are in our society is because we brought them in. I, I recognize that foundationally white people are responsible for pretty much everything in this world. Why did they do that, though? 
Why did they do that? Yeah. Uh, because they, I don't know, wanted to cut a corner. Maybe they got a few bucks. It wasn't around when it first happened, uh, but they, they made some poor decisions. There's no question about that. So you don't know exactly why white men caved? I don't. Sorry. <laughs> All right. When I come back, we're going to take some calls. Christopher Cantwell is with me. Christopher Cantwell, he's a writer, a radio talk show personality, He's an alt-right, alt-writer, and an anarch, 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 what do you say that, James? Anarchist, anarchist. Christopher, um, let's go to the Bible go-to guy out of Los Angeles. He's been waiting a while. Bible go-to guy, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding you on the air. Hey, thank you, Jesse, for taking my call. Good morning, Christopher. Good morning. Yeah, you know, um... Just wondering um, how, you know, I'm a little surprised that an intellectual like yourself would not consider these questions a little more deeply, like, okay, well, it's nice to have, you know, people owning their own property and they're, they're their own king and all this um, Disneyland stuff, but then you think, hmm... How are we ever going to fend off a large foreign army from a centralized government with our little bitty kings, kingdoms, and we don't, that we control completely ourselves to get overwhelmed in a minute? Um, well, I'm, I'm not, not entirely what? certain that our, our kingdom oh, right, would be so like tiny, that. first of all. I mean, a, a person can own as much property as they want when there's not, you know, a, 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 a centralized government afraid that they're challenging their authority, right? So somebody could have a very large kingdom. And by the way, I mean, there's small countries all throughout the world who, who don't find themselves getting invaded at the, every other day. So no, the, no, even no. if See, you had small because... states, it doesn't mean they'd be incapable of defending themselves. Let me tell you something. These other countries, these other countries... These other countries that exist, they only exist because a larger super state like the United States is protecting them from foreign invaders. That's the only reason why they are a country alone by themselves. They're really not. They, they are a great example of what I'm talking about, um, where you can't have this anarchy because, see, there's such thing in, in the political world that's called a power vacuum. And power vacuums, they don't exist in nature. They get, they get filled up by other super states. And the minute you have a bunch of little kingdoms running around doing their little kingdom thing, you're going to have a foreign army at your shores invading you. Well, I, I don't disagree that any any type of society that is to exist is going to be have to be capable of defending itself. And, and if it is not capable of defending itself, that that will get proved out in some kind of martial conflict and they will become the uh, they will become the subjects of another. There's no question about that. That's right. So you anarchists will just set yourselves up to become a subject of a I, super I, I No, I really think that you're misunderstanding. This is why I said told him earlier. I think it would I, – I almost just want to start telling people I'm a monarchist. The anarchist moniker is not very useful now. Um, I, I, I really <laughs> think that basically you, you should have people in complete control of their property and treat the, the people on that property as subjects. And and that does not limit the size of the, the potential nation. It's just, it's, just, it's just how we're choosing our, our, uh, our leaders, you know? So you want to be king of your own domain? Well, I, it, frankly, I don't have a whole lot of money, so I probably end up the subject to somebody else. But if I had the money to buy a large plot of land on which lots of people wanted to live and answer to me, that'd be fantastic. I just, I just, I just think that I probably end up answering to somebody else. Imagine, for example, that Donald Trump says this presidency thing is not for the birds. I'm going to go buy New Hampshire, right? If he buy, I live in New Hampshire, so if he buys New Hampshire and I'm and I'm and I'm, you know, Donald Trump's subject, I could live with that. You know what I mean? Bob, because you guys ever in yeah, but see, Jesse, that's fantasy, because who's ever in charge of that central army that protects all these little kingdoms, they would, they would be telling these guys how high to jump. Yeah, yeah well, it's, that's yeah, right. If somebody's going to be telling somebody yeah. what to do. I don't deny that, right? I'm not against hierarchy, right? I'm just trying to find a more efficient way of doing it than, je than, than democratic elections, because a democratically elected government can do nothing other than cater to the whims of the stupidest people in the society. And they prove 100% of the time, they prove incapable of managing that responsibility. Thank you, Bob. We'll go to so we have to take it away from Thank them. You. Christopher, you believe in racism? Is that right? Yes. And define racism. 
the 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 understanding of the reality that there are biological and genetic differences between racial groups. Christopher, you're headed down the wrong path. Your destruction is going to be the same as uh, the KKK, the skinheads, the Black Lives Matter people, because in your fallen state of anger, you're fighting a losing battle. I, I, I disagree with you vehemently. I don't think that I'm fighting a losing battle, and I don't think that anger is a problem when you have enemies in this world. Let me go to Curtis out of Virginia here before we end here. Let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Curtis, thanks for calling. You're on the air with Christopher Cantwell. Curtis? <laughs> Curtis not now. He worked midnights. <laughs> Let me go to... Uh, uh, let's see here. Oceanside, Long Island, New York, and talk to Ian. Ian, thanks for calling you on with Christopher. How you doing, Jesse? Uh, uh, just all is well. First, want to t touch off on a couple of things that we were going over before, and then I'd like to get the Christian and this kingdom. Well, get to Christian, uh, Christopher first, because all right, let me this is the last segment. You're, you're so, I mean, China, Russia, roll over you. Cuba would roll over you. You're, you go write your little books. You're, you seem like some fiction idiot. And uh, the one or two things that you talk and write, don't pretend you're a, you're a Trumpster. Don't get in Trump's way because don't forget his daughter converted to Orthodox. And you sound yeah, like you yeah. hate Jews. I know. Jared Kushner like went and defiled Trump's daughter. Then, uh, it's disgusting. Thank you. Just on the you. abortion issue real quick, everybody ought to look at their little iPod and their computer and thank Steve Jobs' mom for giving birth to him and then handing him off to somebody to raise him. So, so you're and, a Jewish uh, you guy, right? You're, you're calling in to defend the tribes of the case. I don't care on an island, let's say like Lord of the Flies. They'll all know the same thing because you only know what you're taught. And they'll be evil and good, just like in the movie. Hold on, and then, and, hold you know, on, and, uh, go ahead, finish the point. No, no, that, 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 that's pretty much it. And then you got some Fugazis, these Christians. We call them the Hold on, Fugazis. hold on, in, in, hold on, in, hold on, hold on, hold on. Christopher, I appreciate talking to you, but I want to warn you, you're going down the wrong pathway with that anger. Well, thanks for the tip. All right, buddy. Thanks for being on with me. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, buddy.